What is going on guys? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports here to give you the edge for this Rams vs. Seahawks showdown slate on DraftKings. And now wait to break it down. If you guys are brand new to this channel, we provide both free and paid content for all daily fantasy sports across all sports. If you could please show your support by hitting that subscribe button, notification bell, and of course smashing that like button for all of our future NBA content. If you would like to know more about becoming a better DFS player and taking down that big GPP, head over to www.dgfantasy.com. On dgfantasy.com, we give you cheat sheets for every major sport, along with ownership projections, actual projections, and strategy for every single slate. We also cover optimal cash plays, as well as preferred GBP plays and stacks for specific contest sizes. We do the dirty work for you. We are also currently partnered with Fantasy Cruncher, the best optimizer in the industry. When signing up for our $30 package, you also get a $20 credit to use towards any Fantasy Cruncher product. We provide the best value in the industry. And now let's go ahead and dive right into this NFL showdown slate here with TJ back from his Yo. forever vacation, it seems like. Or it seems okay. like uh, you missed the, the entire NFL slate out there catching rays on the beach. You actually look tanner. Yep. This is the first time I'm looking at you. Yeah, so, I do look nice. tanner, right? Nice. Yeah, for that brand, key, right? Exactly West well. Zeki Westwell. Of course, anything Matt, looks still, more tan compared to me. So what? What's that? Right. I said still cashed on Sunday. Oh, did you? You my, actually played my drunk, my drunk lineup. Yeah, yeah. I you didn't play Discord. Kelsey. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming. Uh, I had one lineup. I actually made two cash uh, mm -hmm. lineups, which I know is, is a weird thing to say, <laughs> but one one with and one without Kelsey. Both uh -huh. of them actually cashed. So yeah, I was gonna say because you left, it, I think that's the reason why Kelsey had the floor game. So now that you're back, yeah. he'll never have another floor game. Tyreek Hill will definitely not catch three touchdowns going forward. But Correct. we're here to talk about the showdown slate. You guys have been loving the showdown uh, videos. Yeah. The last one that we put out, TJ, I don't know if you saw, we got 1.4k uh, views, which was actually the I like top, that. I believe, in one of our video or the, uh, any video that we put out for NFL season. So we'll continue this train. Um, again, we're covering every single featured showdown slate. And honestly, I've had more success on showdowns, like a lot more success um, than the NFL main slates. Not that I've been doing bad on NFL main slates, but I've been doing so much better. I've had two back-to-back -back takedowns now. The last takedown I had, I technically lost money because I have a very chalky lineup. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, but they got yeah. first place, and I ended up losing money. Believe it or not, TJ, I don't, I don't get how that I happens. It. it was that big of a, a train of, of this yeah. lineup that we had. But anyway... Talking about this slate here, the uh, Rams versus the Seahawks, it's a two-point spread, a 54.5 over-under, which I believe is the highest that we've seen on any may or any showdown slate so far. Um, we start out by talking about the defenses, whether they're eligible for the slate or not. Um, the answer to this is going to be no. I, I have not felt more confident in saying no on, on a defense making optimal. The only chance that this makes optimal is Russell Wilson goes out and throws back-to-back -back, uh, touchdown interceptions you know, to Jalen Ramsey. That's the only way this happens. It, it will not, again, and, and then Russell uh, Wilson will come back and, and throw a couple more touchdowns. So this will be a shootout. Should be, it's a two-point spread. Seahawks are at home. So this should be a very competitive game and should be a great one. This is a game that Seattle should come out and, and uh, they, they're going to give it their all here. Um, they did not get out to the best start to start the season. Like I said, going to be very competitive. Let's start out by going position by position. The Rams are where we're going to start here first with Stafford. Arguably has been better here to start the season than Russell Wilson. 11.4K, uh, showing the highest owned on the slate, TJ, for obvious reasons. A very, uh, I guess, uh, an average defense here on the other side of, uh, of uh, Seattle. Do you think he's cash viable? Yep. All right, moving on to the running do back. You want me to, do you want me to continue or is no. it just a... Uh, no, it's yeah. a matchup. Uh, it makes no. sense. What, one thing I do want to say, because you didn't ask me about what I thought about the matchup. You kind of just kept oh, talking okay. and disregarded my opinion. Um, no, but uh, Rams actually opened up as one-point favorites. 81% percent of the public bets are coming in on the rams the live line right now i'm seeing is two and a half after they got decimated huh? of the rams yes yeah, yeah. i mean um real, real quick yeah stafford looked fantastic against the bucks um kind of thought he was just gonna annihilate every single team in secondary that he was going to be facing obviously we know the Bucks secondary has been banged up and hasn't been this or that good to start the year Looked human against Arizona, um, so I expect a big bounce back game here against Seattle and a, and a pretty poor secondary. So yes, I do love Stafford for cash. Yeah, eleven four. Don't let that price tag fool you. He should be in the mm -hmm. optimal, assuming that this game script goes the way it's supposed to. Here, switching over to the running back position. Technically, Daryl Henderson. Oh, they actually removed the injury tag. The last time yeah, I looked at this, good. he was questionable. He's good to go. Right. Eight point four k. Yes, um, that was a big question mark heading into this week if he was going to play. But it looks like he is going to thirty one point seven percent ownership. However, he's eight point four k. So I want to hear your take on this. Is he cash viable? 
Do you prioritize him in cash here? I'm not prioritizing him in cash, but I, I don't hate if you're landing on him. Um, I'm pretty you consistent know, given, here. Yeah, given that he's healthy is great. Obviously, he had the rib injury. He missed week three. Came back in week four, Matt. We were a little uncertain if he was going to play. He played 90% of the offensive snaps. A lot. Um, yes, so uh, that's really good. Uh, you know, Sony Michelle obviously got the start week three. Played 74% of the offensive snaps. We thought he might be a little bit more involved. Daryl Henderson banged up only 10% of the offensive snaps. Sony Michelle saw. So uh, I, I do like Daryl Henderson. Honestly, the price tag is is really tough to to kind of swallow here at eight four. But mm -hmm. he's been very good so far to start the year. Um, looks good against Arizona in that game back. He uh, set six point four yards per carry. He was involved in the um, in the past game as well. He had six mm -hmm. targets. So if they're going to continue to utilize him like this, I, I don't hate spending 8.4 here uh, against that Seattle defense. So I think you can go to Henderson and cash, but I, but I don't think I'm prioritizing. I agree with everything you just said. Now I want to move on to Sony Michelle here. You only play 10% of offensive yeah. snaps. Seems to be trending in the wrong direction. However, right. his price tag is 1.8K. So I do like him for GBPs. No. I do like him for GBPs. I will say that. You know, I think he could be sneaky here, assuming he is involved a little bit more here oh, in the wow. passing game. Um, but other than that, I don't like him as a last piece. I definitely didn't prioritize him here. I think there's other value options uh, along here we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. Funk, not really involved either. We'll only see you know maybe 5% of the snaps here at $200. Uh, just a GBP option there. Do you agree with everything that you said? Uh, yeah. Uh, the Sony okay. Michelle play, yeah, definitely more of a big GPP play. I wouldn't trust him. I actually. completely agree with you. All right, moving on to the wide receiver picture. This is where it gets scary. And I only say scary is, uh, the reason I say this is because of Cooper Cup's price tag. 12.4K mm -hmm. is the highest on the slate. Surprise. Um, after a game where he did not impress for the first time this season, got 11.4 points, which is still pretty impressive. Still got 13 targets, but only caught five of those balls. Um, was definitely locked down there. Uh, Cooper Cup, though, 12.4K. I feel like you almost need him in cash. However, in GPPs, I think this is a great place to differentiate yourself. Cooper Cup, do you prioritize him in cash, comparing him to the price tags of Robert Woods at 7.6K and also yep. Van Jefferson at 4.8K, TJ? Yeah, Van Jefferson's been really a thorn in the side of Robert Woods there. But yeah, no, uh, I love Cooper Cup, even at the 12-4 price tag, like you talked about, Matt. Off game, I think the Arizona as a whole there for the Rams offense. So I'm not going to put too much stock into it. Still played 96% of the offensive snap snaps. Um, he's getting work in the slot as well. So I'm going to continue to play Cooper Cup as long as he's getting multiple or uh, double digit targets week mm -hmm. in and week out, you know, and, and the game where they were playing from behind, he saw 13 targets most on the team. So I think that's such a trend that's going to continue here with Stafford and Cup. So yes, I do love him for cash at 12-4. It's a really, you know, steep price tag. So if you do want to get different, like you talked about, Matt, I, I would look to get off of it for tournaments, but for cash, yeah, I love it. Before we get flamed in the comments, because we had one time where one one person came into our comment section and said, you can't build a cash lineup with all these guys. All right, so yes, this is- can, just hit it. This is the uh, type of lineup construction where uh, you can put a very good value play in the captain spot and come back right. and stack all these other studs. Again, just in cash. It usually doesn't have too much upside uh, unless you nail each one of these studs here uh, in, in the flex positions. And then also your captain has performed pretty well. But yes, this is a type of situation where you can go very cheap at the captain spot and then uh, you know, stack these studs here in the flex spots. Uh, Robert Woods at 31.4% was the first week here. He finally had a touchdown, and I was actually watching this game, and he was visibly upset here with the yes, offense and the was. fact that he was not getting the ball near the red zone. He ended up catching a ball finally as the game went along, uh, outperformed uh, Cooper Cup because of that touchdown. Now, yeah. what are your thoughts on including him in the cash lineup here? Yeah, so garbage time touchdown there in Arizona. Um, been visibly upset with the opportunities that he's been given in the offense. It doesn't really look like him and Stafford are on the same page, and it obviously looks like Stafford's been looking at Cooper Cup there as that that number one and you know that tier above these other receivers. Um, when it comes to Robert Wood, I wouldn't prioritize him as a cash play, Matt, especially if you're gonna be going, you know, Stafford, another quarterback that we're gonna talk about, uh, and then Cooper Cup in your cash games. It would be really tough to get Robert Woods in there as well. Um, you know, I'd be looking at Van Jefferson more of a, of a cash play there for me at 4,800. He's seeing the same opportunities as Robert Woods. Um, uh, maybe that's going to change going forward with, you know, the, uh, the visibility or the, the visual, yeah, right. uh, upsetness that we've been seeing <laughs> from Robert Woods and, you know, McVay now coming out saying we got to give all of our guys opportunities, et cetera. Um, you know, Robert Woods played 96% of the offensive snaps last game. So it's clear that he is the number two option there, but Van Jefferson, 68% of offensive snaps. Um, they they love having three wide receiver sets yes. in their offense. So I would rather go to Van Jefferson here at 4,800 if I'm playing cash than Robert Woods at 7,600. I just like that salary save. But I think, I think Robert Woods in tournaments, Matt, 
if you're going to get off Cooper Cup, I think he makes for a really good leverage play. I completely agree with you. There was a slate where the Rams were on a featured showdown slate. This was, I think it was week two when they played, um, where I talked about the fact that Van Jefferson just plays a lot more than than Deshaun Jackson. And yes. all the ownership still went to Deshaun Jackson just because of the name alone. I feel like he was still cheaper right. than Van Jefferson. But I was like, guys, he's 24. I think he was $2,400 Van Jefferson was. But now that we're looking at these price tags, I feel like it's the exact same type of situation here. $4,800 compared to Deshaun Jackson. Jackson's just not on the field that often. I get yeah. it. When he finally does get the ball, it's down the field. What, mm-hmm. what he's known for is just uh, going down the seams here, using his quickness. Um, yes, he can make for a boomer bust play, but the safer option is here with Van Jefferson at 24.5%. Deshaun Jackson just for GBPs. All right, switching over to the tight end position. Tyler Higby, $5,600, has gotten on the field a lot, and I actually don't mind him for some mid-range pricing. However, do you prioritize Tyler Higby over somebody like Van Jefferson, TJ, at 22.7% uh, here in cash. He's tough. No, I don't. I don't believe I do. Yeah. Um, I just think with the builds that we're seeing here, uh, I think Higby, it, you know, if you have the money to get to him, I definitely don't hate it. He's obviously been that that number one tight end here. 79% of the offensive snaps last week against Arizona. Uh, in a game where they were trailing only six targets there. Again, I'm kind of throwing up that whole entire game there for the Rams offense. Um, yes. I think I would prioritize Van Jefferson just a little bit more, but I, I wouldn't hate if you're landing on Higby there as a last. Completely agree with you. Tyler Higby, though, is more of a wide receiver in this offense. Um, but when yes. you're comparing his price tag to the other guys here, I still prefer Van Jefferson. What They've mind- had the same amount of targets, Matt, through four games as well. Yeah. 18 there. Gotcha. Yeah, Tyler Higby definitely don't prioritize him, but I definitely don't mind him if I land on, on him in cash. I think he's more of a GBP option here. Switching over to the kickers, obviously always consider kickers as last pieces. $3,600 for Matt Gay, definitely not that bad of a price tag. And absolute no to uh, the defense there mm. for the Rams. All right, switching over to the other side of the ball. Jake Lutton at $6,000. Are you prioritizing him, TJ, yes. as a backup? I think Jake Lutton is a fantastic play this week. All right, Russell Wilson, lock him in as the other options, specifically in cash where they should be playing from behind here at home, maybe playing from ahead. I don't know, but Russell Wilson definitely going to be throwing Still the playing. ball a lot. 11.8K is technically, is he more than Matthew Stafford? He was 11.4. Yes, okay. So that's why Matt, Matthew Stafford's going to be a little bit higher on. But Russell Wilson, we know his upside, not only with his passing, but also can get it done on the ground. Um, do you agree? Cash priority? Yep. 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 Running, back, play both quarterbacks. running back position here with Chris Carson. He did not practice tuesday right. and it is wednesday when we were recording this so that was yesterday um still no update on today however he didn't practice today okay so he's trending in the wrong direction we don't expect chris carson to play and this is where the value plays come out alex collins uh, real quick there there okay. is hold on now i gotta find the report because he didn't practice today but uh-huh. it said that has nothing to do with his availability tomorrow night Okay, because um, the last update, Carson hasn't practiced at all this week, putting his status in serious doubt on a short week. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so they really don't know. I have, I have Chris Carson did not practice today due to the neck injury in Seattle. Said it is not expected to decide his status until before Thursday night. So, so s- just a bunch, bunch of uncertainty is what I'm, what I'm hearing right. from you. Okay. Right. So if Chris Carson does sit, Alex Collins here, yes. um, he's going to be the cash next lock. best option. He's going to be a cash lock. Now, the, the only... The, the reason I, I want to say Alex Collins is it probably going to be the safest play is because he should get a bulk of these carries. However, Travis Homer and DJ sure. Dallas are in serious consideration after that because when mm-hmm. Alex Collins does play, uh, when he does get a majority of the volume here, we're seeing a lot of split carries with Homer and Dallas also mixed in the backfield. I would seriously consider these guys as well because of their price tags here, TJ. Homer, mm-hmm. only $1,000, and we're, we'll probably see somewhere between 30 to 40% of snap counts if Alex Collins is the primary back. DJ Dallas could also easily be in the mix here. Um, $600 price tag. Do you agree with me? Do you do you uh, agree with these guys' last pieces being involved more so than when Chris Carson does You know, man the backfield here, only being $1,000 and also $600? Yep. I think if Chris Carson is out or even if he does play, I still think you go to Alex Collins there at 3200 I think he's going to be a cash lock for me, Matt. You mentioned how you could potentially play this type of slate with all these studs having a value playing mm-hmm. captain i'd be looking at alex collins with or without chris carson um i would obviously be more inclined to play him in the captain spot there if chris carson is out but yes. we did see last week with chris carson dealing with the neck injury only played 45 percent of the offensive snaps 39 percent of the offensive snaps went to alex collin uh he did get a bulk of the carries too he had 10 he had 10 carries he had two targets so like he was heavily involved in the offense so if he does sit here chris carson on this short week alex collins would definitely be in play i'd be going to travis homer next matt 
at $1,000, played 16% of the offensive snaps and relativity to DJ Dallas only playing two. So uh, my play would be Homer after that. But yeah, if Chris Carson's out, I think he can go. Obviously, Alex Collins would be a lock. And going to one of those other guys, whether it's going to be Travis Homer or DJ Dallas, again, I prefer Homer. Um, I think I that's that's obviously in play, and that's what I would be doing. And again, $1,000 for Homer. All he has to do is catch a ball out of the backfield, yep. and he's hitting value there. So easy, easy. Love that value play out of those two. Alex Collins and Travis Homer, as you guys can see on my screen, I've uh, green-lighted them, given them a thumbs yep. up. Those are my two favorite Opens value plays on this slate. Absolutely Agreed. does. All right, switching over to the wide receiver p- uh, position. This is starting. Uh, t- oh, it actually has gotten a lot uh, easier to to um, look at because DK Metcalf here is now available to play. So he, th- there was a crush- questionable tag on him. So we're getting live updates. DK Metcalf at ten point two k. Uh, Tyler Lockett here at $9,600. One thing to note is Jalen Ramsey is playing and he's on the other side of the ball, which means that DK Metcalf should probably not see too much action. Again, that's just up for debate. Uh, you can start DK Metcalf and I definitely don't hate him because of his raw talent. DeAndre Hopkins um, locked him up last game, only got the ball like two times the entire game. So we should see that exact same thing from DK Metcalf. Uh, 35% owned, however, is higher owned than Tyler Lockett, TJ. 33.8% owned. So, in your opinion, are you prioritizing Tyler Lockett over Metcalf if you are think, playing one of the two? Yeah, if you're playing one of them. Yeah, I think it's a tough it's a tough call, Max. I uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if 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 Russell Wilson really, you know, kind of takes on that DK Metcalf um um Ramsey matchup yes. and kind of goes at him. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. DK Metcalf just an absolute physical specimen here. But yeah, I I think I would go Lockett. He's play, he's 31% of the routes that Lockett has run so far this year have come out of the slot which is the second highest on the team behind Freddie Swain, who's obviously that number three wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'd rather go to one of those slot guys or somebody away from Jalen Ramsey personally. Right. I like I like Metcalf more in tournaments. I think Lockett would be more of a cash play for me. But Matt, I think they're going to have a lot, of, a lot of games where one of them, you know, obviously smashes value and the other one is kind of just met. And I feel like we've seen that so far through the first three games. We saw Lockett absolutely smash in week one and week two he's been really quiet these last two weeks and then over the last two weeks uh we've seen it be more of the dk metcalf show but with the matchup there against jalen ramsey it is it is very tough um i would lean lock it here but you know i still have more interest in going to get cooper cup cooper cup yes and the one thing i like about dk metcalf is he's gotten targets in every single game yes it's one or the other in terms of boom potential but he's been getting you know targets consistently however this is the one week where he might not see those those uh, targets, especially over, you know, his average of what is it, eight a game? Yeah, about eight a game here uh, through the first four weeks. Yeah, but you mentioned Freddie Swain here at $4,600. He's still playing on the field, technically an average of 61.8%. So at $4,800, I don't know, or 4600 rather, I don't know if I like him as much as Van Jefferson, but I definitely don't hate him for GBPs. Do you agree with that? Yes, yeah. um, I don't. I don't have too much interest there. Yes, Um, outside of those three, I really don't have any other interest in the wide receivers. Yes, they're all 200 but they should be $200 because they don't really see the field that often. Switching over to the tight end picture here. This one's interesting. Everett, he's technically questioned. No, he is out now uh, with the COVID-19 protocol. He was questionable. They didn't know if they were, if he was going to see the field, but Everett's now technically out with COVID-19, which means heavy dose of Will Disley at $3,800. Saw the field. I think it was 80% last game. Let me find him. Yeah, 82% of the snaps. TJ, are you prioritizing Will Disley because he's yet another good value option? Could make or break some of these builds here if he catches a, a touchdown. So I, I don't know if Everett's been ruled out yet, Matt. Um, the the injury yeah, right report now, that you're seeing on Fantasy COVID. Cruncher, it says that he was unlikely to play in week four against the 49ers, mm-hmm. and obviously he sat. So uh, I don't know if he's out, but uh, it's something that we do need to keep an eye on. But yeah, if, if Gerald Everett is out, then yeah, I think you can go to Will Disley. There is a cash play. Um, 82% of the offensive snaps last week. So obviously stepped up as that number one tight end role with Everett being down. So yeah, I do like him here as a, as a nice, uh, salary saver at 3,800. But again, I would keep an eye on Gerald Everett, um, you know, cause I I'm not sure the COVID protocols and if, you know, you need to produce back-to-back negative tests, which yeah. is, uh, I'm not sure if that's something Gerald Everett has done yet. Um, so it's definitely something to keep an eye on, but if, if Everett's out, then yeah, I think he can roll with this. And Matt, real quick, one thing that we, that we did skip over last year in, in the playoffs, when Seattle played the Rams, DK Metcalf against Ramsey actually had five catches, 96 yards and two touchdowns. So just something to keep in mind. Ooh. Um, I don't, I don't think Russell Wilson's afraid to go after that challenge. So are you saying that Jalen Ramsey's trash? Yes. Okay. All right. Switching over to the prize I like picks. better on the Jags. 
sport. Oh, I did too. Yeah, a lot more. Too bad we don't have anybody that plays for the Jags anymore. Switching over to the prize picks board here. Um, if you guys haven't signed up for prize picks, first of all, what are you doing? And their code using DGF. What are you doing? For 100% match up to $100 helps us out, helps you guys out. You guys get a free $100 deposit into your account. It's one of the easiest ways to play DFS. You don't have to worry about a lineup. You just simply hit the over or under on any uh, certain fantasy point projection or player prop because TJ loves player props. I'm assuming he's going to be giving us one here in a second. But my favorite prize pick pick here on this board uh cooper cup looks really really soft here at 21 um we saw him only get uh, the ball five times last game still getting to 11 points and he still got targeted 13 times that was the only time this season he hit the under of 21 fantasy points this is the easily a better matchup 21 as much as i uh I want Robert Woods to get more involved in the offense. Cooper Cup at 21 looks a little soft here. I, th I expect this to be a shootout, and I love the over of 21 fantasy points. TJ, that's my favorite. I think it's the. Okay. I think it's more uh, the, one of the more obvious plays here. I think it's going to be one of the more popular ones that is. Uh, but I think 21 is just way too low. All right. Um, I am looking at Daryl Henderson over 19 and a half receiving yards. I yes, I gonna... love these. Yep. I love these running backs out of the backfield that have the ability to catch, uh, especially in a shootout type game, which is something I think we could see here. I think as Daryl Henderson no longer carrying that rib, that rib injury tag only solidifies the fact that he's probably going to be on the field 90 plus percent of the offensive snaps. Again, Matt, in a competitive game, 19 and a half receiving yards for a running back that's going to be on the field, given that many opportunities, way too low. So I love Daryl Henderson over 19 and a half receiving yards. There's just going to be a lot of passing in general for this game uh, between two very good quarterbacks here but that will uh, wrap up our video guys hopefully you did enjoy this content if you did please do it that subscription button notification bell and of course smash that like button for all of your future nfl content with all that being said have a great rest of your night let's cash love you guys good luck